we go and leave Kitty Wittens on bed and get on with video. Hello, hi, my name is Gwendolyn and I now have 10 years worth of unfinished sewing projects. And today I am going to share those with you. The piles are large, the baskets are full, and we should probably dive into the things. Let us start off with the most recent project, which I have brought with me, my lovely friend. Let's bring her up over. It's my most current project. It's the one I am still the most excited about finishing. This is going to be an 1810s uh, Regency era, Jane Austen, if you're literary, early 19th century dress. Cotton, it's lined with white linen, um, hand sewing most of it because sometimes it actually makes me feel calmer and saner to hand stitch. But there's a lot of work left on this one to do. So as you can see, the bodice is sort of half together. The skirt is like together, but none of the pleats or gathers are in. Everything else is cut out. There's pattern, sleeves, trim, it needs to finish going together. The next project we have, it looks like just a large piece of fabric. But it is an 18th century petticoat, and I am currently in the middle of repleating the waistband. This petticoat is one that I had originally made in 2013, um, but it was a little bit too small in the waist for me at the time, and now I am not quite as small as I was back then. So in the interest of, you know, not wasting a really nice skirt that I like a whole lot, I'm just repleating the waistband. And I do not intend to let it languish in a basket like some of these other projects have for like eons. Next up is another Ooh, yes. This is all in pieces. This is all in pieces. So this is the lining here. Let's just turn this right way around. This was actually a cosplay, not a historical costume. The Queen Magdalena from Gallivant, which is amazing and hilarious and you absolutely should watch it if you haven't. It's sort of medieval-ish, but her styles are very sort of like high-waisted, almost Regency, which is kind of what I ended up going for in terms of construction. But I never really got it properly finished at the time. I wore it a couple times, I got some beautiful photographs, but it was never quite done. You can see like some raw edges. I didn't do plackets for the opening. I had originally stitched this down. And I was actually heavier when I made this than I am now. I've been up and down a bit over the past several years and it no longer fits. So I thought why not kill two birds with one stone and refit it so that it's just right. Also like finish it properly. The sleeves are undone here because I actually made these sleeves a bit too tight in the lower arm. And my little vent that I had here is not long enough to do anything. So I need to let the sleeves out a little bit and then like take in this sort of underbust, sort of waisty section and like do finishings, plackets, etc., etc. Next up is actually a bit of modern garment. I have this shirt here, which was actually given to me by an Airbnb host. And she saw that I liked peasant style tops and she had this one that she'd gotten in Mexico and she was like, here, would you like? And I said, yes, please. Um, but it was a little bit too big for me at the time and now it is definitely too big. But I do like the embroidery on the front and I don't want to waste it. I am trying to be a lot more sustainable with my fashion and with my consumption in general. So we're gonna turn this into something. I don't quite know what yet, obviously a top. We're gonna turn this into a new top of some variety and turn it into something that will actually fit and be cute and flattering. This is a thrifted linen top that I got about five years ago. Um, but I really don't like where the hem hits me. It's at a really awkward point at my hip. And then it just sort of like bags up in, an, in a very unattractive way, actually. It always makes me look like I'm a bit, like I have terrible posture. I think what I'm probably gonna do is turn it into maybe a cute little crop top of some kind. And I also want to do some sort of embroidery. 
I don't know if you can see it at all, but there are a couple, um, I think they're actually like little almost tar stains, grease stains, like in mechanical. Anyway, can't wear it. So it is in the project pile. This here, I'm showing you the back side actually. It's my favorite, most comfortable pair of just like loungy pants. They're hair on pants, as you can see. Um, I don't know how well you can see how destroyed they are at the back pockets. Like it's not salvageable. The fabric is so thin and tearing. They're just absolutely worn out. What I do want to do is take these apart and turn it into a pattern so that I can make myself a new pair of pants with the same cut and shape because I just, oh, I love these pants so much and I miss wearing them. I really miss wearing them. All right, last piece of modern clothing. It was actually off a wrap dress that I got at a thrift store and the bodice was way too big, but I really like the shape of the skirt and I love wrap skirts. Um, so I just sort of whack the bodice off it. So this just needs to be turned into a functional skirt. Maybe I could wear it with the white linen crop top once it becomes a crop top. Next up, we have this corset here. It's an 1860s style corset. It has cording, um, corded panels at the hips and in the bust. And the left bust didn't fit quite right, so I ended up just sort of like pinning a scrap piece of fabric in there. And then I wore it that way. I wore it this way to multiple events with straight pins right there by my boob. And I'm really lucky actually that it didn't stab me or like scar me in some way. So I figured that, you know, before I ever wear it again, I should probably fix this. So this waistcoat here is one that I started making back in 2015 for a grad school project. And it was a bit, a bit of a slapdash, last minute, race the clock sort of project, and I never quite finished it. And I made it for a guy who clearly was quite a bit larger than myself, but I like the fabric, I like the bones of it, and I figured that since it wasn't really finished anyway, like no buttons, no buttonholes, nothing, it actually would not be that difficult to turn it into some sort of vest that I could wear. So it is sitting in my unfinished project pile until whichever point I feel motivated to actually turn it into a functional garment for myself. Next up, we have a bit more corsetage. So this was a 1790s pair of stays that I started making. I started making this in 2018 and that was a year where a lot just started exploding and falling apart in my life and things were really dark for a while. Um, and this project was kind of a casualty of that time. But anyway, this is just two layers of cotton twill. We've got a linen tape to edge it. The life exploded and things got tough, like tougher than normal. It was 2018, 2019, those were times. Times I never want to go back to. I would like to go back to this pair of stays. All right, next up, I do believe this is an 18th century shift that I cut out way, way back, long ago, times of yore, in 2013, 2013, I think. You know, basic white linen shift, got the body of it there, I've got some sleeves. See, I've got sleeves, I have gores, I have sleeve gussets, and I don't know what these pieces are. Maybe those are gonna be like shoulder reinforcements, but anyway. It would be nice to have another 18th century shift, so that's something that I would like to finish. This project here is what turns this video into a 10 years worth of projects video. I started this embroidery project back in 2010, 9 or 10, I, I think it was 9. That's actually 11 years ago. Wow. Um, and it was going to be an embroidered cap for a good friend of mine. The crown is comprised of four panels. You can see this unfinished panel here. I even still have the needle threaded. And these were the pieces for the brim. And you can still very faintly, I don't know if the camera can pick it up, but you can faintly see 
the trace design for the brim pieces. And I still actually have the embroidery floss. It would be a beautiful project if I ever decided I wanted to embroider again. Because I actually got a lot done. I haven't looked at this in years. This is pretty. What the heck, Gwendolyn? I need to finish this. That would be really nice. This was from 2018, so we're back into the recent past. That slightly ribbed silk taffeta there was going to be a sash. This was going to be a 1790s outfit. It's why actually it was starting to make the 1790s stays. It was going to be, you know, worn together, part of a whole thing. This was going to be a sash, and this here was going to be a little sort of drawstring jacket. And I believe I cut out pieces. What am I looking at? I was sure I cut it out. Ah, those must be scraps. These are the actual pieces of the garment. You can kind of see front and back. So it'll have a drawstring neck, there's going to be a drawstring that's going to sort of gather a high waist, and then that'll be a front closure there, and then I have the sleeves sitting here. I don't believe I ever cut out lining for this one, so that's something else that I would have to do before finishing this project for sewing it, I should say. Yeah, let's move on. Next thing in the pile, I've got some big dresses to pull out here. This actually is a bit of a hand-me-down project from a friend of mine, Hello Katie. She made herself an 1860s dress, or she started making herself an 1860s dress, and so she gave it to me, which was incredibly kind of her, um, but I need to alter it before finishing it. And I started to pin in alterations, See, we've got the skirt here, which she had mostly put together. The skirt's just inside out. We've got the bodice here and some extra fabric to turn into sleeves. I just need to fit this to me since we are not the same size. Do some sleeves for it and put the whole thing together. I love this fabric. I love this fabric. Speaking of 1860s, what we have here is the first 1860s dress that I made for myself in 2009 wore it to a bunch of events and I lent it to people and it's had a long full life but I was definitely smaller in 2009 so I started taking it apart so that I could make it fit me again let it out a little bit just needed to refit the bodice and then put the sleeves back to the bodice and then reassemble it into a proper dress oh my goodness this was a good idea I am getting so reinvigorated for my projects Okie doke. So next up, this is the one project that I actually have some guilt attached to not finishing. And that's because I started to make a dress for my niece. I was going to make her a really fancy dress for her birthday, which was in July. Because last summer, last year, projects didn't get finished. But I still feel like I owe my niece a really fancy special dress up dress as she doesn't have one at the moment. All right, next up we have the small project basket. Right here we have two pieces that actually go with my German Renaissance dress. And this was the Brustflecke, the bit that sort of goes across the chest. And it's not like unfinished and I've worn that outfit a bunch, but I really wanted to get some beading on the front, some like pearl beading that would follow the brocade of the silk here. It's, you know, it's functional, but it's not finished. Same thing for this little headpiece, headdress, halba, I think is the word for it. This is just made out of a gold silk. This is the band here that goes on the forehead that needed some beading. So even though, again, I can use it, it's sitting in my unfinished project pile because they both need to be blinged up quite a bit. 18th century mitts, 2010 or 11 was when I started them. I worked on them a little bit last month when I was like going, oh crap, I have a lot of projects. This one is almost done. The top edge here just needs turning in and finishing and top stitching. And then this, the right hand mitt is assembled. I just need to finish some seams, turn it right way round, and then, you know, finish the upper edge and top stitch around the little sort of hand bit there, the triangly bit, once I get it turned. Not the only pair of mitts though, there's also this pair, which my friend Nicole very kindly made and gave to me back in 2013. But unfortunately one of them is bigger than the other one and it feels really weird on my arm. I don't know if the fabric like stretched on the bias or whatever, but what I need to do is take in one of the mitts so that they match and they're wearable. But 
They're my colors. I love them. They'd be great in warmer weather. It's cotton with just a bit of silk to line the fold back. And I just need to alter one of them so that they will be functional for me. See, moving on to the small projects pile, there's another little bit of embroidery. It looks like a squiggly S, but what this was gonna be was a corset bag. And this was gonna be a sort of C that sort of swooshed out and it would sort of say corset, like the rest of corset would be in there. And then there's gonna be like some swirly doos and like some initials. And I believe this was gonna be a present. I should finish it. And last in this small project basket that I have is a stomacher, an 18th century stomacher that was going to button up the front or have a sort of faux button closure. Well, even if I finish the stomacher, I have a whole jacket that I have to make to go with it. But nonetheless, it is unfinished. It is a project. So there it stays for now. We are getting close-ish to the end here. What we have here is a pair of wool pants for myself based on, where's the pattern? Where's the pattern? I've got the pattern in here somewhere. Here we go. Here's the pattern. It is a Laughing Moon Mercantile California pants, mid to late 19th century, 1850 to 1900. They've got both women's and men's sizing in this pattern. So even though it is 19th century style, um, the pattern still includes women's cuts and I thought that was super cool and I wanted to do like a whole sort of like historical boy look at that point. Um, so I started making these pants and a matching shirt to go with that. And this was the shirt pattern, also laughing with mercantile. The shirt got a lot more done than the pants did. You can see it's mostly together. It's even hemmed at the bottom. I've got the cuff on. I still needed to finish. Was I flat felling? Yeah, I was flat felling the sleeve on this side. I'd already flat felt this one, and then I needed to do the collar and buttons and buttonholes. And then it would be a shirt. So this might actually go near the top of my to-do pile now. The reason this never got finished was, well, I was having my first depressive episode. It was in my early 20s. I didn't realized that it was depression and that even though I didn't want to be depressed, mental health doesn't work that way. So I spent a whole lot of time at that point just like sitting on the floor and crying, which does not help you when you're trying to get sewing done for an event. So when the event passed and this hand got finished, I put the projects to the side and then like moved on to other stuff that I focused on instead. I still like all these projects. I like the fabric choices. I like the designs. And there are things that like I want to have. So moving on. This is just my little sewing basket that I carry my little sewing tools around. And these are all pieces of an 1860s headdress I was making. And these will all just sort of like line up and they'll get gathered together. And then this will like be a little bow and it'll sort of like almost go around the head and there'll be like more ribbity bits and dangles and some beads. And it's gonna be really cute, I think, if I ever finish it. Considering I started this one in 2012, this was 2012 I started making this. We'll see if I ever get around to it. When quarantine started, I actually did a few more of these little rectangles sewing the lace onto them. And then I got bored again, which is probably why I abandoned it in the first place. But eventually, you know, maybe in another eight years, <laughs> I'll actually get that one done. And speaking of things being done, I think we're done with this video. Thank you for coming along on this weird little nostalgia memory trip um, for putting up with me through all of this rambling. I definitely went on a few tangents here and there. And this has reminded me how much I love my projects and how much I really like making videos as well. So hopefully I'll see you guys really soon. Thanks. Bye.